that will sort of talk. So we'll have a little chat about how to play the IGN gun roleplay. Yes. Because they do play very differently uh, until you get to tier 8. Yeah, the tier 6 different than the tier 8, 9, and 10. Although, the guns are still punchy. Is that right, Seth? Yeah, so just like the just like the main Japanese torpedo line, the guns on these are quite punchy. These are 127 millimeter guns, um, and I think a lot of people don't quite give them the credit that they deserve. Um, so for those of you guys who are grinding up the Japanese destroyer line or what have you, get in the habit of using your guns when it's when it's safe to do so, um, and you'll find your your damage will go up uh, quite a bit actually definitely don't be afraid to uh yeah uh, like zach was saying the uh the guns on the ijn line uh destroyer line they actually have very very high he alpha damage for the caliber of guns that they have it's higher than the americans it's higher definitely higher than the germans mm -hmm. um that is the alpha damage uh, of these is actually traded off by having relatively few guns and a very long reload time for them so while you, you can slap people around, you will not win a sustained gunfight with most other DDs because, generally speaking, that's not the way these work until you get to the Tier 8. And then right. you are the definition of sustained DPM. Yes. And that's what I love about uh, Tier 8 and 9. It's They're very easy to grind up. You don't care if you're bottom tier in the 8 or the 9. You're going to have fun. Um, and if you lose, you're still going to get a good amount of XP doing so as well. Right. Like sometimes when you're in the tier 8 Akazuki, you want to be up tiered simply because it's so easy for you to farm tier 9s and tier 10s, which gets you extra XP, extra credits, that uh, progresses you up that tech tree faster. So, right. Bog Bogsy, I don't quite remember, what's the reload on the guns for the tier 6? Uh, well, mine is at 7.5 right now, and I have spec'd mine for torpedoes, uh, because at tier 6, the Hatsukaro still has 10 kilometer torpedoes, which at tier 6, again, that's well, that's pretty damn good. So, Zap, would mm. you consider that a benefit at all? Because if you do shoot, you have such a long reload that if the if sis, the situation kind of develops and suddenly, uh oh, I better stop shooting because I need to go dark. Well, you actually have kind of some time built in there that already is get you getting you closer to being dark, as opposed to like the rapid firing of the higher tier lines. Um. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's not too bad. Um, okay. I, I find the Hatsuharu to be a very comfortable ship. Um, matter of fact, uh, I always enjoyed playing it uh, when we'd have like a, a ranked season or something like that that yeah. was tier six. You know, it's got pretty good concealment. Uh, the torpedoes, I mean, reach out to 10 kilometer, which at tier six is, I mean, it's pretty impressive. Yes. So, you know, it, there, there's a lot uh, that, that these ships have going for them. Um, I, I think that the challenge is understanding when to give up your concealment um, and essentially, you know, uh, get into a, a duel, a gunboat fight, or what have you. Um, it, your stealth is your greatest weapon in, in uh, the Tier 6 Hatsuharu, uh, especially if you're in a Tier 8 game, random battle, what have you. You don't want to just be out there guns blazing um, and, you know, super aggressively spotting and that sort of thing right off the bat. So That's exactly what you know. I'm doing. <laughs> Bucks the wild man. Yeah. It's a it's a yeah, it's a bot. Yeah. It's not it's a bot. If I would you're not do middle. this against players, I would be very careful. And again. so, what what Bogsy saying is he's basically taking advantage of the bot system. The bots will the AI will automatically prioritize whoever is lowest health. If there's multiple targets that it can shoot, that a ship can shoot within uh, within its uh, firing range it will prioritize the targets that are weakest. So you could be like Bogsy, full health, just sitting around there and saying, here I am, and the AI won't oh, care you that you like exist a because there's, there's a Mackinson that you can that it can shoot at instead. Yeah. Um, somebody in the chat asking, uh, aren't the tier six Japanese DDs basically the same? In many ways, they are very, very similar. They, mm -hmm. they share a lot of characteristics. Uh, at that point in the tech tree split, they still carry uh, most of the same characteristics, but it's preparing you for um, it's preparing you for the gunboat split that will occur at your eight. So yeah, they do they do yeah. feel very similar. 
Yeah, the Fubuki has three torpedo racks versus the Hatsuharu's two, so there's a slight difference there. Or did that get changed? It used to have three back oh. when it was tier eight. I believe you're correct, yeah. I'm sorry, when it was tier eight? Well, when it was tier eight, it had it had three, yeah. But oh, I didn't realize that. Might, I can't remember. Chad, I'm sure can, re you know. Oh, chat knows know. all. I don't trust Chad. Chat knows all. Chat knows don't all. Don't you, Chat? Still does. Thank you very much. It's been a long, long time since I've played um, the Fubuki in anything other than co-op to where I care to pay attention to that sort of thing. <laughs> so, what is an ideal situation that you want to find yourself in for a Hatsuhara to really excel? Are you trying to take a wide position on a flank? Or are you trying to be up front in front of your team, kind of giving them information and holding down? How do you like to play this? What do you see it being the most impactful? How do you see it being question. most impactful? Yeah. Um, so the, the first consideration is my teammates. So I want to figure out, is there are there people that are going to back me up? Um, especially if I'm in a division, I'm probably expecting some, some backup. If that's the case, I have no problem being a little more aggressive, going into the middle, spotting the enemy, that sort of thing. Because generally speaking, I'm going to have a concealment advantage over an enemy in a, in a traditional Japanese torpedo build. Mm -hmm. So... I don't mind doing that. Now, if I am in a complete random battle with, you know, strangers, all that kind of stuff, I'm going to go off to the flank and I'm going to look for, uh, you know, opportunities to spot for the team, but also opportunities to get uh, long range torpedo strikes in um, and kind of watch how the game develops. But it really depends. If I'm the only destroyer, I'm going to have to go middle by default. Sure. Because oh, yeah. you, you just need that spotting so much. That's right, exactly. Your team needs that spotting so much as well. Well, that's true. We're out of warships. It's a team game, ladies and gentlemen. That means you sometimes must spot for your allies and hold your guns for yourself. <clears throat> well, that is true. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I notice uh, Lord Zath is doing a little bit of a secret mission DD play here as he goes up the three line because once these mm. cruisers disappear, there are going to be two battleships spawning up there at a4 and a5 is that right and uh zath is going to be perfectly positioned to torp the crap out of them which is pretty nice because you can see all the other players are heading to the other side of the map so it can be a little tough to finish the wind condition if you don't have a destroyer or some kind of big ship to really deal with those battleships the bot just dodged yeah. my torpedo mm -hmm. who, who at wargaming do i need to talk to about compensation <laughs> so there's there's actually a trick when you fire torpedoes if you want them a better chance of them landing. Uh, the first the, the main thing is you hit the X key to unlock a target right before you fire your torpedoes. So line them up on that line or wherever you think you want to fire them off. Hit the X key to, to break that target lock and then fire the torpedoes. For whatever reason, when you fire torpedoes with the AI locked on, um, they kind of know it's coming. And they, they start doing some preemptive scooty scooty things. Is this an exploit, Zath? Are you revealing an exploit on, on, on... The Terminator AI too strong. Perhaps. Perhaps. Terminator AI is too strong? Oh, we're getting it's Citadels not. with DD guns! Lord Sorry. of mercy! Feels if, good. If Feels you can good. talk a little bit... So, when we get to the Tier 8 and the Tier 10, the smoke that mm -hmm. the Japanese have is... It's not short enough that you it feels uncomfortable, but it's not long enough that it's going to stick around forever. So, mm -hmm. really, really nice when in a gunboat situation. But you have that same smoke at Tier 6. So where do you really apply that smoke in a Tier 6 environment? Do you try to use it for cruisers, or do you really just use it for yourself somehow? Um, most of the time I'm using it for myself. I'm a very selfish destroyer player. Ah. Um, and oftentimes that smoke is going to be used to break line of sight. So if I'm being chased by something, um, if I'm being spotted by a carrier and I'm just trying to get out of dodge, I will pop the smoke uh, to break that line of sight, break contact so I can go dark. Mm -hmm. um, and then once I'm dark I and I, I don't have anybody within my uh, concealment range, then I can feel comfortable getting out of the smoke and, you know, getting the heck out of wh wherever the crazy is going on, right? So that's the whole idea of Japanese destroyer smoke, in my opinion. Um, it's not to sit and just get free damage, at least not in the tier six. Once you get to the eight and the nine, the Akazuki and Kitakaze, yeah. that kind of changes just, just a tad. 
yeah. and you can start having some real fun with it. You can take that lesson to tier eight, and then somebody pops and goes, "But wait, there's more." That's right. At exactly. Tier eight. It is definitely a commonplace thing to uh, sit in your smoke and rain down an ungodly firestorm upon whatever poor sucker is in front of you. So we see right That's here right. that Lord Zap has gone ahead and popped his smoke in front of these two battleships, the Isizushi and the Congo. And I just heard some twerp noises. Now, yes. In the Hatsuhara, do you have a twerp reload booster or no? Negative. No torpedo reload booster, no. That's on the higher tiers? That's once you get to the Shiratsuyu, you can choose the Torpedo Reload Booster. And then when you get to 8, 9, and 10, you do have a Torpedo Reload Booster automatically, yes. Thanks for taking out the engine on the Isuzuchi, by the way. He's going to... yeah. Oh, <laughs> yowza. That's what CVs do. CVs help. CVs make all things That's better. Right. So As, uh... what they do is they spot targets. So you notice I put the smoke up, and then I saw your planes coming in, so I felt comfortable just sitting here because yep. somebody's going to spot for me, which smell, is nice. I smell propaganda, chat. I've heard, I heard there was a saying, there ain't no support like air support. Um, so uh, so uh, uh, Marazel Mar Wiki made a very, very good point in the chat, which I'd like to re repeat for everybody because we haven't said it yet, which is that, remember, everybody, smoke attracts torpedoes much like a moth mm -hmm. much like a moth to a light smoke attracts torpedoes it's just the reality of it guys um if you lay a smoke screen people will start to try and torpedo it because yep probably in it. which is why i generally don't like to use smoke to sit and farm um unless i'm in the the japanese gunboat destroyer line in which case let's have some fun so uh, I see your smoke is starting to dissipate. I think the Japanese smoke lasts about a minute and a half, something like that. Are you going to be able to take mm -hmm. out that Congo on your own up there? Yeah, I'll be fine. Rocket. So what I've done is I hit my engine boost. I waited for the smoke to expire. Now I've hit the engine boost and I'm going forward full speed, um, almost completely broad, uh, sideways broadside to the Congo. And that's going to force his, uh, his turrets to slowly try to track me, but fail to hit me. Yeah, those um, Congo turrets, they turn super slow. Yes, they do. That's right. And the rear turrets, there he goes. The rear turrets uh, were p pointed the other direction. So basically, I just halved the Congo's uh, main battery fire on me by uh, doing that way instead of going around the way that the uh, guns were already pointed. So you've used your detection to stay undetected. You've used your smoke mm -hmm. to help you out when you saw an opportunity to get close. And uh, once you did get close, you were a huge threat as a destroyer with excellent Japanese torpedoes. That's exactly correct, yes. Um, I also held off on firing my torpedoes until I knew that the enemy ship had used their damage control party consumable. So um, I got a, uh, a fire on the Isuzuchi and the Isuzuchi DCP. That's what forced, when your dive bombs dropped on the Isuzuchi, that's what forced the Isuzuchi's engines to be gone for so long. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think you got, you triggered the DCP on the Congo. So the idea was so that when I do hit the target with torpedoes, I'm hopefully getting a flood and that flood will uh, flood for the full duration, which is more damage and more XP that I get to earn. Oh no! Our hero has fallen! Uh -oh. I wanted to be Wait. a hero like Xena. And he was. Bogsy distracted the enemy fleet, pulled it to the north, in a, a desperate attempt to get our cruisers to the away point. They are only one grid square away. It might happen. And it looks like Zath is going to be coming in, trying to take Bogsy's place. You got it. Bogsy takes a DD um, with him. I was going to mention, Bogsy, if you're going to be doing this like Xena Warrior Princess, don't you need to be <laughs> making some real high-pitched screams? <laughs> that's not you know, bad. Like, like I mean, show, right? that's not bad. And, and do a flip and all that kind of stuff, too. I can't do you that. Know, it's important. Oh. I can't do that. Although, I have a huge crush on Lucy Lawless. Always have. So, uh, Brianna, if you're watching, I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we need a Bogsy flip emote. Bogsy smash, Bogsy flip. There you go, Bogsy Warrior Princess. Yes. So, is there anything else that you can think of <laughs> off the offhand that uh, you'd like to tell our chat about the Hatsuhara, Hatsuharu? Uh, no, just that uh, you know, if you're used to playing the Japanese destroyer line, uh, this should not feel any different than 
any of the other ships you've played so far. Um, it's once you get to the seven that things change, and of course the eight when it completely changes. That's that's what oh. we'll be playing next. We'll be playing the eight, so um, uh, we'll be sticking around. Please stick around. We'll be playing the Akizuki in a little bit to show you guys exactly how strong the DPM is. Akizuki. Yes, the Akazuki's mm. guns are nice, and ooh, that health pool, not a joke at tier 8. That's right. Operation completed! That's we another did it. thing that I like about some of the ops, especially Aegis. Uh, they're, they're pretty quick, and for the, for the time investment, the XP gain is really nice. Yes, chat, I dived, because I dived, I dived the enemy squadron like a hero. That's right. That's so, so death picks in chat. He might have died, <laughs> but he came in first on the scoreboard. That's right. 